Education isn't like the life it's intended to provide you for. In education, you're assessed very individually. It's your test results. It's your essay. Afterwards, you're assessed on relationships. Relationships with team members. Relationships with customers. In education, things are surprisingly private. Your essay is read once by one teacher in a pile of 30. Afterwards, you're on a stage. People depend on you. And in education, your motivation is very informed. Work hard because your teacher wants you to. Try on this test because your parents tell you it's important. They told you the tooth fairy was real too. Maybe you don't have to invest that much. Afterwards, motivation comes for free. Providing for your family, looking after your friends, food, sleep, oxygen, sex, Wi-Fi. In 2009, when my friend Doug Cowie and I started a science experiment called Too Many Cooks, these were exactly the issues that we were not thinking about. Not at all. We just wanted to write books. We wanted to see if you could take the teamwork principles from software engineering and apply them to narrative. Start with nothing. Take a team of writers, spend five days, finish with a book. <coughs> we hired a lab on campus and 10 undergraduate writers volunteered. They spent one day planning, two days drafting, and two days proofreading. And three things happened that will amaze you. First of all, it worked. This is the Shadow Hours. It is a rich, thick, tightly plotted novel. There are imperfections, but fewer than you'd think. Secondly, the creativity that those writers showed was greater than the sum of its parts. Our methods were about flow, about sharing ideas. We picked and developed those techniques to let people be more creative, find more elegant solutions in the group than they would have done on their own. And thirdly, and this is the one that takes my breath away, over that week, the writers grew as fast as the narrative did. I watched them get better at teamwork, at giving feedback, at taking feedback. Over that week, they saw the full workflow of the publishing process, from inception to drafting to proofing to choosing a cover illustration. And what really locked it all together is when the book came back from the printers, they could hold in their hands a book they'd written. They could give copies to teachers, grandparents, friends. They blossomed so much in that week. And I should say, these were third-year creative writing undergraduates. They were pretty good to start with. So that's when we started thinking, maybe this isn't about the book. Maybe this is about the writers. And that's when we decided we wanted to be more than just a science experiment called Too Many Cooks. Now, a group of us run Whitewater Writers. We train teachers and youth leaders to run inspirational literacy camps. Our camps take 10 young writers, give them a concept for a story on a single side of A4. The writers take this, they brainstorm it, they workshop it, they develop it, they plan it, they plot it, they storyboard it, they draft it, they copy edit it, they proof it, they polish it, and after four and a half days, they publish it. And that night, you can buy it from Amazon. The writers spend a whole week thinking of nothing but the book, and we spend the whole week thinking of nothing but the writers. And the three things that education doesn't give them, we give them. Individual assessment. The writers know there's maybe 10 names on the inside front cover, but they live and die with every word written. Privacy. 
The writers know their printer is booked for Saturday. They know it will be on their dads, their cousins, their crushes Kindle on the Friday night. They know they're putting themselves out there. And motivation? Hands up if you don't want to write a book. The hardest part of our job is getting them to stop writing at the end of the day. And when you release young writers like this, when you stop trying to direct their attention, when you stop putting safety catches on their creativity, they astound you. They astound you as undergraduates. They astound you as 18-year-olds. They astound you as 15-year-olds. They astound you as 12-year-olds. And they astound you as 10-year-olds. This one's pretty special, actually. We went to a special educational needs school and we worked with eight kids who had a label of autism. And it's my personal kick in the teeth to anyone who tells me that people with autism can't work in a team or aren't very creative because they wrote a book. All I want is for every child in the world to hold in their hands a book they have written and to walk a little bit taller because of it. Thank you. <laughs>